Hey everyone, and thank you so much for being on with us today, and welcome to the first episode of the Solidity podcast. So super excited today to be here with my sister, my business partner, and my best friend, Miss Christina Maggio. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm super excited as well. Super excited for this podcast today. Yes, and I know it's something that we've had in the works for some time, and it's really going to be geared towards, you know, the industry, you know, growing a business, helping agents, helping clients, and pretty much everything in between. Um, We've been in for this business for some time. So today, um, on this first episode, I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to make sure that we had Christina on with us to really just kind of be able to share your experience um, here at FFL um, since we did both have prior experience before. So again, Christina, thanks for being here with me today. And just to kind of hit the call off, I guess, um, when did you really start working here in FFL and why did you get started? Um, So about two years ago now, um, I started with FFL really all in um, when COVID started, actually. So that was April of 2020. Um, I was bartending at the time. Obviously, COVID hit. I could no longer bartend. And um, not to go too much back in history, but it was always like our, our, our deal, like what we always wanted to do was build a business together. So we had tried at... Uh, You know, our practice companies prior obviously didn't work out. Um, And at that point, I had watched you be with FFL for some time now. I knew it was the real deal. I was watching other folks across the country just be successful. And I was like, if they can do it, we can absolutely do it. And it just seemed like there was no better time um, with, you know, COVID hitting. And I just, we decided to go all in together and, and decided to actually build a business. Absolutely. And it's crazy like to think about like what that looked like then and and what it looks like now. And it's two short years later, right? It's like, you know, if you could take yourself back to that time when we got started, Christina's like April of 2020 versus Mm -hmm. kind of what it looks like now coming in as, you know, a a new agent or just even coming in as an agent wanting to build a team. Like, what does that look like now versus what it looked like then? So we knew we wanted to build a team then, um, but we really had no idea how. So to say that, um, you know, we we messed things up is putting it lightly. Um, I think at this point, we've messed things up so much <laughs> that we now have the system in place to get new agents started quickly. And even more so, agents that we're working with, if they want to bring on agents and start building an agency themselves, start building a team themselves, we have the proper infrastructure at this point to allow them to do that quickly. Um, I hope that answers your question. It does. And Christina, it's funny because like if if we look back, it's like we were just really willing to fail. Oh, yeah. Like it was like, oh, yeah. What was the worst thing that could happen? I mean, at least we tried. Exactly. And like we tried every day from, you know, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And, you know, and it paid off and it's continuing to pay off. So I'm super thankful that you were there with me then and kind of where we've been, you know, through those times you know, trials, triumphs, and everything in between. Um, so thankful for that. But, you know, looking at that process, you know, at Family First Life, we definitely have a system that's really duplicatable for producers, right? 100%. Like it's boom, boom, boom. You do this, 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 this. This should be your result. You work hard, right? I think anything in this business or in any business, like you got to work hard. If you're not working hard and you're getting paid at a high level, it's probably something wrong right? So um, with that being said, I mean, what do you think are some of the things that you did in the beginning that you're thankful that you did and you went through so that maybe other agents don't have to go through them coming in now? So I think one of the biggest things that new agents that are hiring struggle with, especially if they're working from cold market resources, is just they hire anyone and everyone, right? And I definitely did that. Um, Yeah, you did. (laughs) So I think that was one of the first things I learned real quick. Um, You can't hire everyone. Anyone can do this, but it's not for everyone necessarily. 
Um, you know, they have to want to actually work hard. They have to have the proper mindset. They have to be willing to, you know, do certain things. You have to set proper expectations on the front end. And I didn't always do that. So as I started hiring, um, I learned that setting proper expectations, letting people what this, letting um, people know what this opportunity really does look like and what it can do for their family um, was vital to finding the right people that were going to do what they had to do to get where they wanted to be. Absolutely. And I think like one thing for me in this industry that's always been difficult is I've always wanted to kind of dictate like what the agent does. Like if I was, you know, writing at a high level, I wanted that agent to write at a high level too. I wanted them to write at that level or a higher level. Um, and I wanted that for them, not for me, right? Like I truly at this point wanted that for them even two years ago. And the thing is, is like one thing that was hard for me to realize was we can't make people do what they don't want to do. A hundred percent. Right. And um, like you were just kind of talking about, you know, we've put a lot more infrastructure in place to make sure that a new agent can come in and they can see success fast. I also think that we both know that we can't make people do things they don't want to do. Right. So um, more recently, we've put a structure in place. Will you talk a little bit about that structure for a new agent? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're super excited about the new agent trainings that we've implemented. So essentially now we have four interactive trainings that new agents go through that they join via Zoom um, alongside doing, you know, the new agent boot camp and whatnot. So it allows them to interact with agents on the team that are doing, you know, this at a high level um, that they may not necessarily even be working with directly. So we found that implementing those four Zoom calls, almost as if um, that's like the agent's training week, has been a game changer for us. So that, along with implementing um, a Get Started website, shout out to Maddie, um, it, it's, I feel like those two things have really been a game changer for new agents because it's just making everything super systematic um, and ultimately duplicatable throughout the whole, the whole agency, the whole hierarchy um, for others that are hiring as well. Absolutely. And I think it's great because like you said, you know, sometimes, you know, you might not, you might be on, um, you know, Yuri's team and you might never really talk to you, for example, but you do the lead strategy call on a Sunday and you have the chance to meet all of the new agents. All of the new agents have the chance to meet all of the new agents and they have the chance to meet you, whether they're working directly with you or they're working with somebody else. Like I mentioned, they might be working with Yuri. Now they feel like they have another outlet which is important for a new agent, right? I know like when I got started in this industry, I wanted to know that there was somebody there that I could call. There was more than one person I could call, right? Um, so I think that that's huge. Um, and then also just get started fast, right? Like I think we've really just kind of honed in on that. Like yeah. you got to come out the gate and just go. Like make a mess, we'll help you clean it up, right? Move fast and break things. Like I live by that. Because if you don't in this business, it's going to make it a heck of a lot harder, right? A hundred percent. Paul said to me two years ago, like one hour in the field is equivalent to 20 classroom hours. And I share that with every new agent because it's so true. Like the number one thing that we preach to new agents is just get on the phones, make appointments, get in your first 100 homes in 30 days. You're going to see and hear anything and everything in those first 100 homes. Like, that should just be your goal. Just get in 100 homes in 30 days, and you are going to crush your learning curve. Absolutely. And I think it also allows us, like, um, from a stance of trying to help the agent, knowing what agents to help, right? 100%. You know, if I see an agent plugging into all these calls, and they're plugging in, they're grinding, they're getting started, they're doing everything, they're like a what's next kind of agent, right? What's next? What's next? What do I do now? Those are the people we want to spend time with. So it's also helped us identify, you know, I think who we should be spending time with, right? Um, so it's been awesome. But kind of going through your, you know, your venture, right? Like I remember, you know, it being April 2020 and May and June, July, August. And I remember we would be sitting there we're like, we're working so hard, like, and, you know, like, hey, Paul, like, we don't really see, like, I don't know what to do. We're doing something wrong. And the thing was, is like, what we see now is we weren't doing anything wrong. But on the producing side, it's instant gratification, right? You instantly help that family, instantly get paid, which is a beautiful thing. But on the recruiting side, 
That's not what it always looks like, right? So with that being said, kind of share a little bit about kind of your journey and, and what that looked like, felt like, and what kind of has come to light in the past two years. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So <laughs> when you're writing business protecting families, um, you know, you go in a home, you protect a family, and, you know, you're receiving your commissions within 48 to 72 hours, give or take, right? So instant gratification, just like you said. Recruiting is delayed gratification, right? And I think that's why a lot of new agents, um, they almost psych themselves out. They, they get fed up really easily because they're so used to that instant gratification and they're not looking at it from a 30, 60, 96 month span that they're looking at it from. I've been, you know, messaging agents on LinkedIn for five days and I'm not getting a response. And it's like, it's, it's all consistency. Like that's all it comes back to is just doing these disciplines consistently every single day. And that's what's going to allow you to build your agency and get your agency where you want it to be. It is delayed gratification. Um, it, it's it's not going to come overnight, just like, you know, serving families does. You don't you're not just going to wake up essentially with, you know, deposits in your bank account. Um, it, it, it's delayed for sure. And you just have to know that as long as you're putting the work in you're going to essentially, you're going to get the fruits of your labor, just like Paul always says. Absolutely. And that's huge to kind of hone in on is, you know, delayed gratification is needed sometimes. It's almost like a test in this industry, right? It's like, mm-hmm. how long can you bear the that pain, if you will, of I'm doing this consistent activity. You know, I have 30 people who are going to take their exams, but I'm over here and I'm like, it's not working. It is working. It's just delayed. It's supposed to be delayed. I believe that everything in life is almost like a test, like, and to whoever you believe in, they're the one testing you, right? And essentially, I think that we went through a lot of those tests, but what I'll always say is we never stop working hard. We continue to work harder and harder and harder. We took feedback, we applied it, and moved forward, right? Like, I think that that's really important because... Christina, like I could ask a hundred people for feedback, right? About anything. Like I could ask a hundred people for feedback about, you know, what they think about the, the, this, this blazer, right? And I'm going to get a, an array of answers, right? But it's like, at the end of the day, if I don't apply the feedback, it doesn't matter. hundred percent. Right? hundred percent. So like, we're, we're always very honed in on if we're calling you for help, like we actually need help, yeah. right? Like yeah. we're not just calling a chat, like... You know, like, I love everyone that works here, and I'm so thankful for, like, the way that Family First Life operates, right? Because it's like we can, it's a phone call away, your answer, but it's about the action you're going to take after, right? A hundred percent. So, um, we've always honed in on that, and that's really important. It's like, don't waste people's time. Like, reach out intentionally. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think one thing that we've always done a really good job of is anything that Paul has ever asked us to implement to grow we didn't even question it we just did it because we trusted Paul we believed in Paul and we knew that whatever he was telling us he came before us he did it before us we just need to listen so no matter how uncomfortable it was we just did it absolutely and like there's been a lot of times Christina where we were even like does does this make does this make sense right we're we're gonna do it anyways yeah just all, we, we just did it. Because no what questions. was the worst that was going to happen? Yeah, we, I mean, we were just going to be where we were anyways. Exactly. That was going to be the worst. That was the worst that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, that's the crazy thing. So, like, always, like, take the advice you get and don't get the advice until you're ready to implement. A hundred percent. Right. to implement it. <laughs> because it's like, if I think of a call I took 30 days ago and I'm like, oh, I'm going to implement it today. And it's not going to work the same. It's not as effective. Right. So take an advice and implementing. What were some things that um, in the beginning that were painful that maybe like you did want it? You were like, you know what? Maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I I just don't even want to do this anymore. Like, was there a time you felt like that the past two years? I'm sure there's been times I felt like that. Um, But to be honest, I really love what we do. So there's never been a time where I was ever like, I'm just going to leave. Like, I don't. I really can't bring myself to that. Like I, I, I just, I love what we do. I love, that's why I'm, I'm able to 
to do it at the level that I'm doing it at. Um, not that I'm exactly where I want to be, but I wouldn't be able to put so much time and like passion into something if I didn't actually enjoy what I was doing. Um, has there been tough moments? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I always just have to take myself back to like, this isn't happening to me. It's happening for me. And this is happening now. So it doesn't happen when my business is even bigger and cause a bigger disruption, if you will. Um, I think Paul's actually helped me a lot with that, just with my mindset, like the whole, it isn't happening to me. It's happening for me and just really taking a step back and having different perspective on things. Um, Paul's definitely helped me more than he even knows with, with being able to, um, get through, I guess, like the day to day bullshit, if you will, that comes with this business, but that's going to come with any business. And anytime I do start to feel sorry for myself, I'll just remind myself that I could be behind a bar till (laughs) 3am. And I don't feel sorry for myself anymore. I'm happy. Again, I'm, 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 I bring myself back and I'm happy to be here. So Absolutely. And I think like your mind sets everything, right? Like if your mind isn't on point in this business in any sector that you're trying to focus on, it's not going to work. And like whatever you feed yourself, tell yourself, that's what's going to happen, right? And um, going back to that, you know, Paul definitely helped me too out with my mindset. He still does every day. He doesn't even know how much he helps. Exactly. (laughs) You know, it's like a repetitive message of like, it's going to work. It always has. It's always been delayed, but it's always worked here. So it's like, what are we like? What, what what are we holding back from? And I guess that's what almost trumps me sometimes is you know you have an agent come in, they want to do A B C, but they won't move. So it's like, find your why, right? Like find find your why. Why are you doing this? Because when the why is going to exceed. You know, the why is going to exceed the how when the why is big enough to you. And your why is your why. So, like, figure out why you're doing this, what you want to do, and why you want to do it. Because once you can figure that piece out, everything else will fall back into place, right? It's like, we knew, like, I was already here, but when you came in, you knew, like, you wanted to come in and we were going to build a business. And that's what we did. Why? Because we've always wanted to build a business. We've always wanted to help agents see like they can do this too. It's not hard. It's truly not that deep. Like this business, it's a, it's a people business. All we're doing is talking to people, right? And we've always wanted to show agents like you can do this too. Like why, like, why not you is my number one question. Like why can't you do it? Why can't you do it? Why can't, like we can all do it. So I think that our why of wanting to show people like the path that you know because we were into practice companies so wanting to be able to expose this to to other agents in this industry was literally our passion like wanting to help agents be in a better predicament for their families while helping other families like that's a win for everybody um and that's what helps me put my head on the pillow at night and 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 sleep well is knowing that i help families i help agents and i help put people in a better predicament A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think one of the most beautiful things about Family First Life is just that the system is the magic. You know, like you're not the magic. Paul isn't the magic. Sean isn't the magic. The system is the magic. So as long as you're working the system to to the level that you're supposed to be, there's no way you can lose here. There's no way. Absolutely. And um, it's just, again, it's, it's a testament, right? So follow the system, plug in. And one thing I feel like in the beginning, I know I struggled with, like, you know, even like a year or so ago was when we got a new agent started or, you know, getting a new agent started and they were not seeing the success that they necessarily wanted to see or that I wanted them to see. I used to get really upset about it, right? But then I realized, like, anyone who's doing well here, they just work. Like, that's all they do so it's like it's up to you to, to to do the work if you're doing the work and not seeing the result it's probably just a small tweak or adjustment away but if you're not working you have to be honest with yourself right and I remember having this conversation time and time and time again to the point that I'm like hey Paul thank you so much for this like thanks for listening to me so many times 
because I used to be like, what am I doing wrong? Right? Because it's like self accountability to me is huge. I think if you're not self accountable, like, I don't know, you should like work on it. However, you need to work on it or you're not going to see the success you want in this business. Self accountability is literally key. And, you know, I used to, uh, every single agent I got started, you know, it was like I wanted them to go out and help 20 families their first week or their first month. Um, or I wanted them to help 50 families if they were helping 40 in their previous company or whatever, or if they're just getting started. I wanted them, I wanted, I wanted it for them more than they wanted it for them. Yeah. Right. And realizing that and realizing I was doing everything I could, as long as I knew that I was okay. But I wasn't okay the first six months. I was like, no, it's my fault. And Mike did this and Joe did this and Chris did this. And, you know, Rachel is trying to get started and she made 200 dials. And it's like, hold on, let's take a step back. There's a whole system that like thousands of agents are seeing success within. It's not a you problem because like you said, Christina, I'm not the magic. You're not the magic. Paul ain't the magic, Sean ain't the magic. It, it, the system is the magic. You follow the system, you'll win. So it's like, I never take credits for agents' losses. I also never take credits for agents' gains, right? It's like, it's an even playing field. At the end of the day, whether you're out there helping families or you're out there you know, building a business, it's your business either way. You're still 1099 independent contractor. And I think sometimes we can lose sight of that. Like, um, so... I wanted to hone in on that because I feel like when you first start building, sometimes that can be a really big setback. It can really do like a mind block, right? Like, why isn't this person doing it? It's like, it's probably because of they're not working hard. Yeah, you can't make agents do things that they don't want to do. All you can do ultimately is just give them the tools they need to get where they want to be. Lead, guide, direct them. And if they don't, you know, take the bait, if you will, there's nothing that you can do. Um, I actually, a lot of agents that I talk to will talk about, they take it personally when they don't see an agent that they spend a lot of time with, um, seeing success. And it's just like, you can't take that personally because you know, the system works. So if they were working it, they'd be getting the results they want. And now not everyone wants the same results. Not everyone wants to help, you know, 20, 30, 40 families each month. So it's important to understand what that agent does want from FFL, Um, You know, some agents want to come in, they want to help 30 families a month and build a business. Others want to help 15 and work part time. So it's really important to understand what agents actually want from the opportunity and then just give them the tools and the proper expectations. I cannot preach enough about proper expectations. Um, And that's what's going to allow them to get where they want to be. And if they don't take advantage of the tools, like it's really confusing to me um, when new agents aren't plugging into the training. Now, if you look at any top agent across the country, they all still plug into all of the weekly training. So why would someone that just started a new career here not be familiar with the system, not even familiar with, you know, serving families in insurance, not have to plug into the training and see, and think that they're going to see success? You know, so it's like you really have to take a step back when someone isn't seeing the success they want and just point out to them like, hey, how many leads did you purchase? How many dials did you make? How many, you know, appointments did you set? Because it's like, if you set three appointments, like nowhere in the system, part-time or full-time, does that say that's going to work for you? Right. You know, no matter what your goals are. So it's like, you you can't take it personally. And I think um, you do have to spend time with new agents so they know that you care. They know you're in the, their corner. You Like, you know, they know that you believe that they can do it. But spending too much time with a new agent that hasn't actually went out in the field and done anything yet is pretty much enabling them. It can, it can hurt them. So it's like you have to find that happy medium. And I think as you work with new agents, um, you will. And you'll learn how to set the proper expectations for what that agent wants to do with, you know, with working with FFL. Absolutely. And I love that. And um, it just actually brought me back. I just hopped on um, Teresa's call and... She um, was doing a team call with her agents, and as she opened up the call, she said to me, she said, uh, or she said to the to the call, um, as you guys all know, I'm brutally honest each and every week. Same, Teresa. And <laughs> Teresa didn't say that because, you know, like, she, she 
was trying to be tough. She said that because she cares about the agents. Like, hey, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. And there's three questions that Shauna always asks and then is brutally honest. Like, where are you at now? Where do you want to go? And what are you willing to give up to get there? Right? And when your agent can help you understand those three questions, because everyone, like you said, is going to be different. They have different goals, right? You now have to be brutally honest with the person of what is it going to look like for them to get there? Like, what does the activity look like? What does the time look like? What does the schedule look like? Because again, everyone's is different, right? Yeah. Um, and brutal honesty in this business, whether it's an agent or a client, you have to be. Like, I'll say like one thing about the Northeast and then I'll, I'll end it and I'll, and I'll pass it back over to you, Christina. But, you know, if, we're, if we do one thing right in the Northeast, it's that we're brutally honest. So like that's a trait, thankfully, that we were we were kind of born with, right? <laughs> to an extent. Um, however, when you're talking to people that you don't talk to every day, it makes it a little bit harder. But again, it's a curve, just like anything else. That once you get through it, you're through it. You're past it. Okay. Now it's not hard for me to be brutally honest with anybody because I know it's going to help them, and I expect the same when I'm asking for help and mentorship. So. Um, Love being from the Northeast in that essence. Yeah, I think being direct, whether it's with your clients or with agents, is so important, for sure. Absolutely. And um, I think that really, you know, just kind of seeing other agents' success, seeing the success that, you know, we've had, and just seeing success around the country, it's a testament of, like, really, like, what we're doing as a company, it does matter. Like, not for a second do I ever think, like, what we're doing doesn't matter. If I did, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to be here. I agree. You know, I agree. Yeah. That's... I remember one day, you know, I was talking to you and I had said something. I, I was, you know, it was an off day for me. And, you know, I'll openly say that I had said something to you like, I hate this. I was frustrated. And I was, I was, be, I was acting like a kid. I was frustrated. And I was on the phone with you, Christina. And you said to me, like, what are you talking about? If there's one thing that I'm thankful for every single day when I wake up, it's that I love what I do. So since when <laughs> do you want to say some crazy thing like that, right? And I was like, reality check, you know? And I never said it again because it's like, I love what we do so much. Not only do we impact each other in our team in a positive light, but we impact so many families. And me and you could go out and help families, right? But it's like, we can't help everybody. So it's like, Having that, those agents with us that are running with us, that's exciting. And uh, being able to get there, you know, on your journey, like, you know, you've really just kind of been a complete team player. And if there's a team player award <laughs> for our organization, you're going to get it every single year because day in and day out, you focus on what the agents need. You cater to the agents' needs. You don't really care what my need per se is that day. And I respect that, right? But <laughs> you cater to the agent's needs and you don't care whose agent it is, right? Like if it's my agent, your agent, or Johnny Smith's agent who lives in Oregon, you're still gonna help them the same way. And that's another beautiful thing about Family First Life. Like, I don't wanna go on a tangent about this, but I do quickly wanna hit on it. Like in the other two companies that we were with, there were, were there secrets? it lightly <laughs> right I yeah, agreed but here at family first life it's like if I know something I'm gonna tell everybody about it mm -hmm. because I want to see everybody win and there's enough to go around right like it's knowledge and what I also love about this industry is everything is a skill that can be taught it can be learned like we didn't you didn't come in and just know how to like get on the phone but you just did it so you learned right so like skills can always be acquired. And that's what I love about this industry too, is there's not prerequisites. You don't have to be like, oh, I've sold life insurance for five years. And I'm no, that doesn't make sense. People get their license every day and then they start learning from there. So I'm um, just kind of throwing that out there. You know, it's, it's important. A hundred percent. And um, Christina, what I guess I would kind of to close it out to kind of get to close it out, you know, over the past two years, you know, what are some of the biggest differences that you've seen within yourself, um, your day to day, your, you know, what your schedule looks like, you're acclimated, you, you have 
day-to-day duties you don't have white space on the calendar and um you take it very very seriously so like what does that look like um kind of two years ago and what does that look like now yeah so I think just to kind of bring it back to like what you said about being a team player I think once you start um you know hiring agents and building a team it's no longer about you like it doesn't matter um, if you don't want to wake up at 5 a.m. It doesn't matter if you don't want to answer the phone at 12 o'clock at night. It doesn't matter if you don't want to, you know, help the three new agents that need to purchase leads that day. It, none of that matters. So I think um, building a business has really allowed me to essentially, um, you know, really care about other people. Um, and take myself out of it and never feel sorry for myself and just really just just serve (laughs) not even to sound you know corny but really just like serve the community serve the families that were helping serve the agents that were helping and I think that's why I love it so much because I know I'm helping people it gives me purpose but I also know I'm helping them have better um, better lives ultimately um, to be honest And, and that's why I wake up at 5 a.m. every day and that's why I'm so structured every day because I know if I'm not the best me they might not be the best them that day and I can't put that on them like just because I'm having a bad day doesn't mean I can't you know show up for them so I think that um building a team and really just taking myself out of it not worrying about myself um and just you know making sure that I'm there and showing up for everyone else has has been like probably um what's changed most for me over these past two years and then obviously you know my morning routine I wake up at five um I drink a half gallon of water every morning (laughs) she does um if she stays at my house I hear her in the morning yeah I just I, I drink a half gallon of water before I pretty much do anything work out um I'll journal meditate for a little while and then just make my way to the office and just start my day and whatever, you know, I planned my day out the day before. Shout out to Dayminder. <laughs> Literally planned in 15 minute increments. So I just know what I got to get done that day. Um, but honestly, I'm pretty much working from the moment I'm up to the moment my head lays on the pillow. I'm just always thinking about this business. I love what Eric Schmidt says, like, it's a 24 yes. seven. And that's why like, you got to love what you're doing. If you're building a business here, you got to be passionate about it. Because this is not a nine to five. It's not even an an eight to, to eight it, it's a 24 seven and you just always have to be focused on you know like how can I help the the agents I'm working with how can I make myself better and more available to them and how can I, I how can I essentially just serve that's that's it <laughs> absolutely and you know with your whole morning routine Christina it's like you wake up you work out you journal you meditate like you do that for you like you because oh, yeah. for Christina and yeah. that's Christina's time before before 8 a.m right but like when the second 7 30 8 a.m oh, that when that's hitting like it's it's showtime like 7 a.m it's like showtime show like 7 a.m to like 12 p.m is like showtime <laughs> right right and it's like um you're structured though you make sure you get done what you have to get done so you again you can show up you can be available you can be the best version of Christina not just for Christina, which is first and foremost most important, but for the whole entire team. Um, and you always show up. So thank, thank you for you. that. Thank you. Um, you've taught me a lot about myself over the past two years, um, you, well, throughout my whole life, but especially the past two years in, in this business. Um, and just kind of being able to like look at ourselves and take a lot of accountability. I think like, you know, obviously you're my sister. So growing up and being kids, right? It's like, Most kids don't take accountability. Like me and you blame the neighbors, like our neighbors, like, you know, Chris Shields, we we love you. We blame Chris Shields for everything. It was usually never even Chris Shields. But here's the thing is when you're an adult, you can't can't blame people for other things, right? Like Christina, if you don't wake up at 5 a.m., you're not going to call me and blame me. It's not my fault. That's your fault, right? And I think we've done a really good job at learning like, hey, we have to take self-accountability but so do our agents. And we have to show them that by taking it. 100%. Right? Um, so I think that that's huge too. And it's been it's been a pleasure being on this journey with you. And, you know, our, our group's helping over 500 families a month, which is really exciting because 
know, we're only going up from here, no doubt about it. And um, just seeing the impact we've made thus far and just seeing the impact that Family First Life makes, makes every minute that I'm working hard at this business all worth it. If I hated this business, I couldn't do it, right? Like, no I'd be out. It. Like, yeah. yeah, I'd be out because there's going to be problems. It's a business. Like, it's not even a problem. It's called a business. So when a problem arises... It's just business. It's just a business. We're just running <laughs> a business. It, it, it's, it's normal. If you have no problems in your business, it's probably not doing a whole lot. Yeah, it's and, probably and I, not a business. And I say that with, with love, but like I remember like when we first were getting started, we didn't really have a lot of problems. But as we're getting bigger and growing and going through learning curves, we get to learn about all of these. And then we also get to show it to the people, you know, as we keep moving forward, like, hey, do this, don't do that, right? Let my hindsight be your foresight. A hundred percent. You know, and that's huge. So, um, you know, I really appreciate everything you do for the team day in, day out. I love working with you. I love that you're my sister, my best friend, and my business partner. And um, I'm just looking forward to breaking records with you this year and just really killing it. Um, so thank you for being on the episode one of Solidity. So excited. And um, more, many more to come. Mm-hmm. Anything you want to close out with, Christina? I just thank, thank you. Thank you for being my best friend, my business partner. Just I, I can't thank you enough. Everything that you do for the team, you're just, you're amazing inside and out. Um, I appreciate you so much. And I'm so excited for this podcast. This has been a long time coming. So I'm just, I'm beyond excited to be um, on the first episode for sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on and you'll be on with me each and every week. This should be really fun. Yeah, Super excited. Awesome. We got it started and let's go. Let's go. Thank you.